legacy as president of South Africa. And therefore, we must go and look at the real facts. And if we go and look at the economy, we will see that when you became the president in 2018, the growth rate, the economic growth rate, was 1.3%. Last year, it was 0.9%. So under your leadership, the economy retreated backwards, causing havoc for the people of South Africa. We had a meeting with you as leaders on ESCOM. And you yourself said, 20 years ago, ESCOM was seen as one of the best electricity utilities in the world. Who destroyed ESCOM? The ANC destroyed ESCOM. You were in charge of the war room to end load shedding. You failed. When you became president in 2018, the local currency against the dollar was nothing else than 11 rand 55. Yesterday, it was 18 rand 92. That's under your leadership. And if you go and look at the JSE and the loss of 22% in US dollars, while if you, for instance, look at the NASDAQ 100, they gained 147% under your term as leader. And the S&P 500 gained 75%. Those are the realities. If you go and look at the unemployment rate, when you became the president, the unemployment rate was 24%. It is now 32%. If you go and look at the youth, it increased with 20% where the unemployment rate for the young people, the youth, at this moment is actually 64%. I want to talk about corruption. Honorable Chairperson, or Speaker, the President himself said that the ANC is accused number one when it comes to corruption. And I said, well, that's what the President said. And I said to yourself, but you are number one of accused number one. And now you have a number two who is also accused of corruption, but nothing happens. What happened with corruption in South Africa? The fact is that your Secretary General, Fakila Mbalula, he said that they lied to protect the former president in terms of corruption. They must use, the ANC must use this position to defend and to protect the previous president. Honorable President, if you look up at the wall there, you will see there's a banner of Parliament Oversight and Accountability. There was no accountability. There was no oversight. And it comes to you as well, as the next president after Zuma, when they came to the Palo Palo issue, it was this ANC in Parliament who protected you. Why? You said you did nothing wrong. Why didn't you come forward and be accountable to the people of South Africa? I want to quote what the Archbishop Stanley Mahoba said. He said, and I quote, It is frightening to realize that as a society we've become so worn down by lies, corruption, and incompetence that we are no longer interested in finding out the truth. We've been captured by lies." Close quote. I want to talk about crime in South Africa. Honorable President, in terms of the Global Organized Crime Index, South Africa now ranks seventh in the world, third in Africa because of mafia-style criminal networks and organized crime syndicates. The murder rate, when you became the president, was 35 per 100,000 of the population. It is now 45 
per 100,000 of the population. In the hot seat, then the Moroccan ESCOM senior boss under pressure to put lights back on. In the hot seat, then Moroccan ESCOM senior boss under pressure to put lights back on. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. John Swainer TV. Please subscribe. Then Marukane is about to tackle the hardest job in South Africa, getting the lights back on. As a CEO of State Power Utility ESCOM, he takes on an organization hampered by alleged coal theft and sabotage, and which faces financial and technical crisis. He will be working with a government shareholder that has a conflicted vision for the country's future energy mix and is struggling to move forward on a major overhaul of its electricity supply industry. As South Africa heads for national elections in May, turning ESCOM around and solving a persistent power crunch could rescue Africa's most industrialized economy from a cycle of decline. ESCOM's board chairman told the Reuters, failure would mean the country is stuck with the status quo of crippling blackouts that currently cut off electricity for everything from homes and businesses to traffic lights and hospitals for up to 10 hours every day. There are two things here that need to be done simultaneously. Mote Tonyati, the chairman of ESCOM's board of directors, said in an interview, one is to fix the current business and the other is to reposition and restructure ESCOM so that it can be relevant for the future. Nyati said the utilities incoming boss who holds degrees in chemical and petroleum engineering as well as in MBA possesses the technical know-how and leadership skills to succeed where so many others have failed. Marukane, who ESCOM said will not speak publicly until he formally begins his tenure on Friday, previously served as a senior ESCOM executive for five years until 2015. He is going to be able to learn and hit the ground running, Nyati said. Others are less optimistic. ESCOM's role in powering the country's economy has made the CEO job South Africa's most high-profile executive position. But its challenges mean fewer and fewer corporate high flyers are willing to take it on. Dan is likely the most qualified person on the short list, said Peter Atad Montalto, managing director of the consultancy firm Grotham. But that is an exceptionally low bar. Revolving door. ESCOM's top job has become a revolving door through which more than a dozen CEOs have passed over the past 15 years, serving in either a permanent or acting capacity. Two of the previous permanent appointees were Pakamani Hadebe and Andre Deruta. The former left citing the damage the job had done to his health. The latter allegedly had poison slipped into his coffee. ESCOM is still recovering from a period of pervasive corruption 
that engulfed many South African state-owned companies under former President Jacob Zuma. Zuma denies wrongdoing. Marokane has portrayed himself as a victim of the so-called state capture era, having been suspended from his ESCOM job with several other executives. I was not a moderate performer, he told a commission investigating state capture in 2020. To be sitting home with a cloud of suspicion and poor performance on you is very painful, he said, based on the transcript of his testimony before the commission. Marokane comes to ESCOM after a stint at sugar producer Tongat Ulet, where he attempted to rescue the sugar company following an accounting scandal that eventually saw it placed in bankruptcy protection. On his return to ESCOM, he will take on a distressed company dependent upon government bailouts and that need to push through plans to unbundle it into separate generation transmission and distribution businesses a process that has become bogged down in bureaucracy and red tape he will face a daily struggle to keep escom's fleet of aging plants online while while assuring the concerns of donors that have pledged billions of dollars to win South Africa of coal, which generates some 80% of its power. Marokane will need to push for new generating capacity, largely in the form of solar and wind, overcoming resistance to renewable power from some quarters of an African National Congress-led government. It's an extremely tough job, said the router, who spent three years as a CEO before his alleged poisoning and a falling out with the ESCOM board. Maybe he should avoid having a personalized coffee mug. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Jones Wayne TV. Please subscribe. Bye for now till we meet again next time.